afternoon and welcome to the Business and Technology Show. I'm Alistair Dickinson and I'm the CEO of Mapsize.com. Um, today, a little bit different, we are broadcasting from the Isle of Wight and from a kitchen in Yorkshire with Gemma. Hi, good afternoon, Gemma. How are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, Poppy is also with us uh, on screen and she's managing comments and questions. So do ask your questions and we'll yeah. relay them to Gemma. Uh, good afternoon, Poppy. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Yeah, please do ask your Excellent. questions and uh, yeah. So yeah, looking really forward to this. It's been uh, it's a little bit different for us because we usually do it round in the studio. I'm, I'm actually sat in the studio, but I'm the only one here, which is a, a bit bizarre. Um, so Gemma, we've got a Q and A. Um, we've got ten questions or so, and you know, we're just going to have a conversation about those kind of questions. Um, but the, if you're ready to go, um, the first one is: Can you tell us a bit about yourself, your background, and how Social Gems got started? Yeah. So um, ten years business development. Um, working, I actually started working in Staff and Warehouse, believe it or not. While I was in Warehouse? Yes, yeah, uh, selling phones. Um, literally went from that to business to business because I had a little boy. Um, you don't find out the hours in Staff and Warehouse. You literally find out on the Sunday for the following week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was never going to work. Um, so decided I needed money. I still I quite liked the commission aspect. Yeah. So I went for a business to business role. And literally sat there and got handed a laptop and a phone and just told to crack on. Oh, right. Wow. Um, uh, and I kind of sat there and looked at it and thought, how the hell am I going to get my personality across on a phone call? Yeah, I'm yeah. used to being able to see people in person and, and sell that way, and it was completely alien to me. Um, so I found LinkedIn and started utilizing that as a sales tool to be able to sell to other people. Right. Um, so it's something I've actually used for about 10 years. Okay, um, so you've been around on LinkedIn for sort of 10 years and you've, you've seen it, how it's developed and how it's changed then. Yeah, and I've, uh, I've essentially had to develop and change, change with it. Yeah. Um, as part of what I was doing as a business development manager, there'd be clients that would come and ask me about LinkedIn, um, ask for help and guidance, help them with different parts, help them ex understand it a little bit better and how to work it. So Social Gems was kind of a, an organic thing. Right. Um, I'd had people asking me for a while. I've been giving advice for free. Um, so I just thought, do you know what? It might be worth actually setting this up because LinkedIn isn't common knowledge um, and how to utilize it isn't common knowledge. No. Yeah. I, I think I think one of the things is, and I know we're going to have probably lots of conversations about LinkedIn um, as we go through, because I've only started using it properly or as an engagement platform since last October, but I have been on LinkedIn for the last 15 years or, or whatever it is that I've, I've been using it and it was looking for jobs originally and then we built some company pages and we did the usual posting of, of like hey we've got a product you should buy our product our product's great um, and it worked it worked for a while um, and then we created groups and communities and those kind of things but it's progressed on from that um, and I think I'm still learning the uh, the new the new LinkedIn um, so you, when did you set up Social Gems? When when when's that come about? Because you say it's organic, but you're actually now full time. This is this is you, isn't it? Full time. This is me, uh, and this happened three months ago. Three months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so literally, Social Gems is still a baby, uh, but in that three months, we've done five training sessions. Uh, right. We've got another two booked in for next month. Um, and we have 12 clients who get us to write their social media content on a weekly basis for them. Right. And are you doing videos for them as well? Or are you, are you just doing social en engagement content? It depends. So some people want to do videos themselves and I can help them do the content and structure that video. And obviously with the subtitles and things like that to ensure it's going to stand out. And um, there's other people that want me to do videos on their behalf. I've done a little bit of that. Um, but Hannah Key, um, we do them together. So right. she's always had quite a, a large online following, but she felt like she came across as a bit too professional sometimes. So mm. she wanted people to see she got a little bit of humor. Yeah. Um, so we did a series, which is due to start back up next month. Um, Hannah at the moment, bless her, has got pneumonia. Oh dear. Oh my and God. So um, but as soon as she's back, we're going to be back doing the um, Recruiter Untrained series. All right. Okay. That sounds oh. like fun. Yeah. Do you know what? Actually doing them and recording them is yeah. hilarious. So we did the Christmas party, um, yeah. the last one, and it's literally me absolutely hammered, 
sending the wrong picture to the wrong group of people. <laughs> All right. That sounds like a... <laughs> highly amusing because it just shows that she's, yeah. I mean, obviously as a trainer, you're dealing with people on, on a daily basis. Yeah. yeah. We've established with LinkedIn the way things are changing. People actually want to get to know the person behind that brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't think that's just LinkedIn. I think we are changing the way we buy and the way we sell um, right across all platforms. Um, you know, I read a, a bit of research last year. Um, well, I read quite a lot of research last year, actually, in, in how to adapt your sales model. Um, and what was what was very, uh, there's lots of great examples, and it was about when you go and buy something, the first place you go to is Google or a search engine. And then you look for it, and then you look for the top five, and then you look, go through and, and you follow, and you then find out who's actually running those businesses. Um, and if you're lot, if you lose interest along the way, you tend to dismiss the the, the sort of business that you're engaging with, um, and you're more likely to engage with the human than you are engage with a product. I think I think you're right. I think with I've always said this: it's people by people, not products. Yeah. yeah. I think more and more people are actually switching on to the the aspect that they don't want to be treated like a number. Yeah. They actually want to feel like their business is valued, and if they're getting to know the person behind that brand they're more inclined to get that value that they're looking for and that human interaction because as humans we crave that interaction we crave actually speaking to people getting to know people yeah it's what makes us tick so yeah, since yeah. the introduction of social media so many people hide behind screens yeah. um and you're right especially on linkedin years ago it'd be for want of a better term guys buy my shit mm. yeah yeah, um, yeah no, no, that's exactly it that's, and that yeah. worked um, and we used to be able to send emails out. Oh, by the way, you were saying hide behind screens. If you're me, I hide behind a microphone. <laughs> so I'm just looking at my, my, my screen here. I don't know what it looks like on your monitor, but I don't know if it's the angle of the camera, but the, the microphone looks like this big. <laughs> I could actually probably hide behind the, anyway. Um, so now, you know, a couple of years ago, we used to, we used to do, <laughs> stop it we used to do e-shots and you know it'd be hey we've got a thing buy a thing here's the trial sign up for a trial now and all those kind of things um now we don't i mean it's about education solving problems and you know explaining what we actually do um it's very difficult when you're a product business or a subscription-based business you know to personalize it um, and that's what i'm kind of struggling with at the moment um, but i think we're getting there <clears throat> right let's move on sorry <coughs> the um you have to keep doing that with me because i can talk for england <laughs> hey you know we've got we've got plenty of time uh quick overview of the company now so you set it up three months ago which is cool um and i've got any i've got a huge amount of admiration for anyone who decides to go down that route and set up a company you know i've only ever worked for somebody for about two and a half years so i've been employed um for the other 21 years i've, I've been doing my own thing you know, uh, not always successfully, but you know, hey, <laughs> that's life. Um, so, can you give us an overview of Social Gems right now? Uh, where it's where it's going to go over the next twelve months? Uh, what your plan is? What your objectives are? You know, what it what it is your key offerings are, and, and what customers you're looking to help? There's a lot there. Just just break it down. <laughs> is literally, um, it's a social media account management company and training company. So we can either help you generate inbound leads through LinkedIn or help you do it yourself. Okay. So you can either, if you, you're you not a creative person and you need some writing advice on one, you can come to us. Um, we can write it on your behalf. We can also help you guide you through that process. So do the content for you, but with a view of you picking it up yourself in a few months once you've worked it out. Right. Okay. Um, that was originally what all we were going to do, but a lot of people want to do the training aspect, so we've added the training in there as well. Right. So that's, that's changed since the original plan of setting up social gems. Um, we're now doing mail shops on, on companies' behalfs, uh, but a little bit more strategic as opposed to the whole 15 page long essay of buy my shit. Yeah. Uh, more of a short, snappy spark a little bit of intrigue type thing yeah and do you get do you get a good response from that type of of e shot yeah i mean <clears throat> when i was when i was employed the last company i worked for was the british institute of recruiters 
Um, I do mail shots on a daily basis, and um, not a daily basis, sorry, a weekly basis. Yeah. yeah. And from that, we generate about 50, 20 leads a week. Right. So they work as long as they're short and snappy and, and spark interest. Whereas the, the way I tend to explain it to people is if you give them everything, you've essentially dropped your trout, your pants. So right. what incentive is there to come to you for more information? Right. You've told them everything they need to know. Okay. Yeah. I might give that a go then, because uh, yeah, our e-shots are quite long-winded, aren't they? Probably, because we try and get everything in, we try and explain yeah. all of the benefits of what we do. But it, it's just one of those. I mean, if, if you tell everybody everything, there's no incentive. And once you've got that individual on the phone, it's so much easier to explain exactly what you do and get them to buy into you yeah, by yeah. having that conversation. But it's hard to get to that conversation if the marketing isn't allowing that. And if you are giving people too much information, they just think, oh, well, I don't need to know anything. They've told me everything. Yeah, yeah that's true, a good point. True. If there's, if there's no actual kind of, yeah, okay, all right. Because I think we, we do, our e-shots go to about 12,000 a week, don't they? Yeah, they do. Something like that. Okay, so what's, tell us a bit about training, because I didn't know about that. I, I, obviously, I know you post a lot, and you post on people's behalf and all that kind of stuff. What's, what's the training? Are you, are you running courses, or are you doing one-to-one -one training? It's both. So we do one-to-one right. um, -one training. If you wanted to do one-to-one -one training, we can do it with the group. Um, and essentially, the training is every aspect of LinkedIn. So it's the basic how to be profile to make sure it can be out, um, posting, engagement, when to post, how to structure a message to people, when to actually send that message. And essentially, it's just how to utilize LinkedIn as a complete, effective sales and marketing tool. Yeah. Cool. You froze a bit there. I don't know if uh, did you get that, Poppy? Yeah, yeah I got all of it. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, yeah. voice was fine, but we, we there was so. Sort of... <laughs> <laughs> so what's the what's what's the plan for the next sort of twelve months? What, what where are you looking to go? Are you looking to hire additional people, or is it always going to be you sat in the kitchen in Yorkshire? Do you know what? We've got twelve people that are writing content for at this minute in time. Uh, so I'm swamped. I'll be honest. Right. At the moment, we have a because I didn't want to put too much pressure on the company as a whole. Yeah. So we've got one person who's doing a little bit of ad hoc work for me at the moment, and they will be coming on board full time. Yeah. So I can afford to put bring them on full time. Yeah. And we've done it that way. Is literally, if I had gone, absolutely, come and join me tomorrow. Yeah. And then by the end of the month, I've not got enough money in the bank to pay them. Yeah. I'm going to have to let someone down, and that could potentially have a knock-on effect to the business. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So, Absolutely, and it is a it is a difficult time at the moment, especially if you've got like you know a bigger business where you've got a multiple team and, and all of those kind of things. You know, I mean, we, we we saw last year was was particularly difficult. You know, businesses aren't investing; they're not spending as much. They're not, you know, everybody's concerned. Mm. Quote. Um, so yeah, it's it is difficult. It's hard at the moment. Eh? Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. Well, it's, it's uncertainty, isn't it? It's, it doesn't really matter what what it is. It's it's been caused, and and it's that uncertainty that's that's causing everybody to be blinded by the like a rabbit in the bloody headlights. Uh, it's kind of we did it to ourselves, you know. Yeah. Uh, let's cause uncertainty. We've not had that for ten years. Um, right. Anyway, so um, you're looking to hire somebody. What's go, going on? Twelve months. You're going to have a small team around you. You're going to have offices in. In the... Yes, the, the, the plan is to get to uh, 60 clients by the end of year one right. um, and have three more members of staff plus cool. me. Cool. Wow. So by the end of the year, I should be stepping away from the content aspect of the company and just mainly focusing on the training and, and managing that team. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to scroll up because my mouse isn't working. Um, <laughs> From my point of view, my, my plan was to have, um, I would have been happy from obviously starting up in November, to have three clients uh, by January. Yeah. So the fact that we got 12, um, yeah. and can I just, as well, there's been no business development done for Social yeah. Gems. They're all inbound leads from LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, have had 96 of those so far since setting up. Right. Um, Obviously, the 12 have converted, some have done the training aspect. Yeah. The others, I physically haven't had time to go back just to see if they're actually still interested in it yet. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that, just that's amazing. You know, 
yeah. It's, it, in life, isn't it, really? it's a bit like hiring a decorator, is it? You know, it's just like, can you come and do my decorating? Yes. When? Three months. Good, you hired. Can you come and do my decorating? Yes. When can you come? Tomorrow. No, I don't want that. Although Sorry. you'd be surprised, I did have someone ring me up on Friday morning and go, that's fantastic, Gemma. I absolutely want to use you. Can you say all up for Monday? So me being me went, oh, of course I can. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it, isn't it strange when you're, a, when, when you're a startup, when you're in that first year, you kind of say yes a lot more than you say no. Uh, because you're just like, I've got to do this, I've got to do it all. I'll stay up 24 hours, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I forgot what sleep is, I'll be honest, guys. Yeah. Make up some trial these days to get rid of the bags. <laughs> the um, right, so we've done that. We've done the uh, let's talk about oh no, what I was going to ask you actually is um, what's the type of customer that you're what's the ideal customer? Who, who is it you're looking to work with and what size of company do you work with? Are you, are you looking for a small mid market or is it um, solo kind of um, businesses? single business owners, those kind of things? Do you have a demographic or uh, is it sort of anyone who wants your help? Anyone who wants his help. To be fair, it's anyone who's looking to start utilizing LinkedIn as an effective sales tool and start generating inbound leads through that method. Right. We can help with that regardless of like, because obviously with the larger companies and some of your small, small to medium sized businesses, they want their staff training so they can do it themselves. Yeah, yeah. But with you, the one man bands and your sole traders, the majority of those people will want that online presence, want to start generating inbound leads through that method. But you know as well as I do, it, it's not an overnight thing and it is quite time consuming. Yeah. So it's just easier for them to outsource. So what we tend to do and what works really, really well is us doing a little bit of the engaging and the liking and the commenting on their behalf and the posts, but them doing stuff as well because then that increases their online presence quicker without them having to put too much effort into it. Yeah. Right, yeah. I think a lot of people yeah. the content aspect um, and fear. A lot of people are actually scared of commenting, of liking, of sharing content on LinkedIn because they don't know how it's going to be taken. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, 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 that's one of the problems I had because I tend to write fairly long comments. So I'll, I'll, I'll give an opinion and then sometimes it backfires and you're like, oh, it's not quite what I meant, but okay. You know, if you didn't like it, so be you know it's like and the danger is it's when you write it as well what frame of mind you're in <laughs> uh, it's just like rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> um so yeah no I, I do would you what's 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 the best thing on on kind of linkedin to be doing is it is it commenting on everybody else is it unique content or is it about commenting or both so you've got to think you want to put that content out there because you want people to know who you are and what you're about sure um I, I mean, different marketing individuals will, t will tell you to do different things, but I always tell people they need the 60-40 split in terms of engagement. Yeah. So you have three posts a week going out that are just about who you are um, and what matters to you as a person and, and just trying to engage people in conversation. Yeah. I have two posts a week that are telling people what you can offer and how you can help. Yeah. A lot of individuals in marketing will tell you that it's all about the engaging posts, but I personally believe you need a mixture of both because then you, if you don't have that mixture, you're in fear of building a great online presence but never generating any inbound leads from it because yeah. people don't understand what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Um, I'm just going to break there. Um, Poppy, have you got any questions? Anybody um, commenting uh, or making any noise? Uh, we've got noise from Mike. Um, we all know Mike. Uh, <laughs> Mike's uh, uh, so uh, he refers back to a uh, uh, very early on a conversation we we're having but uh, apart from that we haven't had any questions so far so I'll keep an eye on those if we do okay, so if you do have any questions um, just keep typing um, and do obviously subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching that'd be great okay um, let's talk about technology um, because obviously you're a, a, a big LinkedIn fan, that's what you do. Um, but businesses is all driven by technology and technology is changing a lot. You know, uh, I've spent 21 years implementing CRM systems. When I started implementing CRM systems, I was a lot younger and I had a lot more hair and a much faster car. Um, but the... the 
yeah, I lost the car as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the um, back then, I mean, email was new. Email was a new technology, so you were dealing with databases. You know, customer databases were were a brand new thing. It was really exciting stuff. Um, now it's not very exciting. Everybody has a database of some sort. Um, there are so many different sort of d databases. You can even have databases defined for a certain type of business. Everybody's making a database of some kind. Um, so. What is it that you use? I mean, you're going to have an account system, I would imagine. I would imagine you've hooked up with a decent account system. Um, so the accounts aspect of Social Gems is dealt with my, by my business partner. All right. So I do have a business partner for this. Um, there was investment into Social Gems just to ensure for the first few months it alleviated that pressure of yeah. me kind of being around going, we need to get business in. Um, so he deals with all that aspect. We have employed a accountant to deal with everything on our behalf, uh, to be fair. So I don't really get involved in that side. Right. But the, the, accountant, yeah. the accountant will use a, a piece of software that you know, accountants use for zero or something, like, zero or something like that. One, one of the things, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I, you know, I'm a, a big believer. Our, our accountant manages that for us as well. We don't, we don't manage our accounting system. We have an invoicing system internally, and that works really well. Um, so, uh, obviously, LinkedIn, your mobile phone, camera. Do you have a separate camera or? Videos. Videos. No, everything, literally everything is done through my phone. So, yeah. the reason for that is, um, don't get me wrong, we've got drones. Um, we haven't got another camera, but there is other ways that we can actually do videos here. Right. But we're teaching people that they can do it themselves at home. Yeah. 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 Um, and most people have got maybe a selfie stick and a phone and that's all they've got so yeah, that's yeah. what they're using to prove that you can actually get that that level of traction yeah. and level of engagement through linkedin without it costing you the earth yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, to totally agree i mean i bought my first digital slr um when did i buy that did it, was it before it was before christmas wasn't it yeah 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 before christmas so i yeah. started using that about kind of november december time um and if anybody is ready to move from uh um a mobile phone because mine wasn't great, to be honest. It, it wasn't. It wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. Um, uh, I would go to CEX um, and buy a second-hand digital camera because uh, you'll get them for less than two hundred quid, and you're not then forking out seven, eight hundred pounds on a digital camera. Um, it's just. A thing. It makes sense because at the end of the day, you're only going to be using it for the same thing. Yeah. Mm. Um, what phone do you use? What what operating system? Apple or I, Android? I, I do now have an Android, but I didn't at the time. I had a Windows phone. It, it wasn't quite broken enough to, to, to replace it. So I, uh, yeah, I, I, I moved to an Android and then, then bought the camera. With, with LinkedIn and with actually, the best phone to have is Apple. Yeah. So Apple have got um, an app that's specifically designed for this type of thing called Flip. Right. Um, and you can do backdrops on it. You can put filters on it if you're having one of those days where you just think, no, not really. Yeah. <laughs> but you've kind of got to do it. Yeah. Um, and it also also auto subtitles. So yeah. there'll be occasionally when I put a video out, there'll be odd spelling mistake. Um, that's just because Clip really struggles with Yorkshire. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you can literally go into it and just amend it. Yeah. So whilst you're talking, the phone's actually auto subtitling it for you. So right. it means that you can put content out quite regularly on LinkedIn with minimal effort on your side. Oh, so, wow. yeah, literally videos that I do on LinkedIn roughly take me anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes. Yeah. Right. Longer than that. Right, that's quite cool. Uh, Poppy's got an iPhone, I'll be... I'll be uh, <laughs> Stealing my phone. <laughs> it's just a clip, that's all it's called. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll probably come for Android as well at some point. I think they are working on something, but the subtitles just aren't as good at this moment in time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we will yeah. get there. Yeah. I did use um, I did use Rev originally to do subtitling, and then I just decided I could do it quicker on my own. I um, use Capwing. No, oh, sorry. Capwing works quite well as well. Right. Yeah, I just I just open it up and write my own file because I can I can listen to myself and, and type at the same sort of speed. Um, until I, I, do, I don't know if you ever tried to do that, but you, you're typing your own kind of comments and you're listening to yourself, and then you miss one and you get into a loop of hearing yourself. And it's like, I've got to take these off. This is, this is awful. <laughs> so you get the same word over and over again, or the same sentence. Um, so because Hannah, Hannah's London based yeah. and I'm culture based, 
but the videos we do together we don't actually meet up for right so, still send me her clips yeah. i'll do my clips and then i've kind of got a tight all together and then subtitle it right and so what do you use um capwing right capwing okay. I, um, because with the clips it doesn't allow you to import videos and then put the subtitles on that right so literally have to use capwing for it but i have to do one by one by one and then mm. by the end of it like everybody's going this video is fantastic and i'm like i've had enough of it <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now I use I use Camtasia, uh, similar sort of thing that you drag all the videos in and the images and all the flying bits and then you know put your comments over the or your subtitles over the top and then export the whole thing as as, as a one. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that took me a bit of bit of learning as well. Um, so planning in your business, uh, I'm a great advocate of actually planning business activity. Oh, I know it sounds all pretty boring and like, it's just like, just get on and do it. You know, why would we have a plan? But actually, you know, if you have a plan, then you've got a destination, you can follow your journey and all of that kind of good stuff. Um, you're at an early stage, you're three months in. Have you planned out your first year? What what revenue you need and all of those kind of things? Would you add, would you say to business owners that it's a good thing to do? Or would you go, no, ah, just get on LinkedIn and it'll be fine. No, I know we, we have actually put a plan in place. So we plan to get to, um, obviously we plan to have a team by the end of the year. We want to get to about 60-ish um, clients that are working with us, which yeah. is not achievable. Um, so that's literally the plan is when we get to, so same when we get to 20, we need to take someone on new yeah. uh, to help deal with that. And then essentially every 15 client intervals, yeah. someone needs to be brought in. But that's the only plan that we have. Everything else sure. is kind of fluid. The right. reason that is, the majority of people that are actually going to be working with us are going to be content writers. Yeah. Now, some of those content writers that come on board may have different skills that I don't have. Yeah. Um, and they're good at writing in different areas. So say yeah. a client wants an article that they want publishing or some form of presentation, but in, yeah. in, um, in a specific way. If the people that we bring on board can do that, then we'll add that to our offering. But the only reason we have what we have at the moment is because they're my skill sets. Yeah. yeah. That can only grow if other people's skill sets come into the in, into the company. Sure. And are you planning to actually employ locally and, and, and have office space, or are you, is it going to be a remote uh, a remote model using you know service providers or contractors you know that you found on LinkedIn that do content writing or, or video or, or you know, other other skill sets? They're going to be employees and um, we are going to meet up once every two weeks because I think right. it's important for people to meet up. But mm -hmm. no working from home works. I mean, it uh, works for me. Mm -hmm. I've every company I've worked for as a business development manager, I've worked from home. Right. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Um, I'm not going to lie, in the beginning, it's difficult because you're used to that human interaction. Yeah. Um, but after a while, you kind of get used to it. And I've always found that if you've got a to do list next to you at all times, yeah. it keeps yeah. you on. If you don't have a to do list, yeah you kind of lose your way yeah. yeah and that's the key plan isn't it right you know that you plan your day you know plan your week all of those kind of things that's why i'm an advocate because I, I kind of sit down in the morning and go right these are the things i've got to do or the night before i'll go tomorrow i've got to do these things i don't always get them all done but at least i've got a guide of what i'm meant to be working on mm. um, and then poppy just throws things at me and says have you have you done have you done the thing <laughs> have, have you told me about that over there I've that's not, because that. that's also because I even do a to-do list. I think everyone yeah. should do a to-do list. You know, whatever your role or your job, you just need a to-do list to can schedule out your day. Yeah, it's yeah. just um, you know, it's it makes it also, isn't it? Because if you get if you've not got a to-do list in place, it's easy to lose what you've got to do in that day. That's right. And then you want to find what to let people down in terms of your clients because you sat there thinking that you've completely forgot. I mean, best example I can give you, probably not a very good example to give you because it doesn't paint me in a very good light at all. Um, but one of my, uh, I was really ill before Christmas and I was trying to get everything done for everyone. And this lady had come to me and said, can you do my content? And I've gone, absolutely. We'll get it all sorted and ready for the 1st of January. Um, and then she sent me a message on Boxing Day going, how are you getting on? Um, she'd not been put on my to-do list, so I'd completely forgotten all about it. Right. Oh, and it, yeah. <laughs> but me being typically Gemma, I literally responded with the got to put to-do list, I'm sorry, I will get it done by the day. Sent it all over to you, she's absolutely fine, she actually works with us now. 
Um, but, but just how easy things are to, yeah. to pick in, you know, have it documented. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, it's hard. I've been playing. And, and, and also the, the bit of honesty there of like, you know, I forgot to put you on the list, you know, um, I will work on that and uh, we'll, we'll work through it and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll get you ready for uh, the, the 1st of January. And uh, I think that element of honesty and that bit of engagement is, is that human element as well. I think it works, you know, re it's really important. Great, great. And to be fair though, my face gives me away, so I can't lie for anything. <laughs> I try. I've tried in the past. <laughs> it just kind of gives it all away. It's like, do you like that Gemma? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That is. Yeah. Uh, um, any engagement online, Poppy? Anybody? Uh, no, not at the moment. No, we'll we'll keep going as we go. Cool. We're clearly boring the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to find you get a lot more like you get a lot more watches after the event um, because obviously people will download it or they'll stream it or they'll they'll watch it outside of work hours. So, but we've got to record them within work hours because yeah, we do. Working all day every day. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's a nice break for me and Poppy actually to uh, to kind of get out and do this on a Wednesday afternoon. Um, so, uh, small businesses um, and all, all of that kind of good stuff, you're looking to grow and it's, it's all fantastic. Um, technology gives us the ability to sell and help anybody anywhere. You'll probably agree with that. Um, are you focused on a particular location, working with customers in a certain location, or are you just you know, focused on the UK, anybody in the UK, or are you actually got further afield and you'll help anybody anywhere? Um, well, so uh, it was going to be UK. So as a business development manager in the past, I've always covered the whole of the UK. Right. I've never had a region. So literally, I've had meetings where I've been in Portsmouth, and then the next day I've been in Wales. Right. And then the day after, I'm in Scotland. So I, I don't actually mind traveling around in these people because I think face-to-face -face interaction, especially when it's social media and it's something so you're giving people a lot of trust by allowing them to have your login details for LinkedIn yeah. and comment and post on your behalf. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't mind, but I seem to be getting quite a lot of people from America asking me to help them. Right. I don't mind doing that, um, but obviously with the training, uh, it's all got to be webinar based as opposed yeah. to in person. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. by the time I've paid for a flight over there, I've made nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. And do, and do you, do you work on a do you want do you work on a fixed fee with each client or is each client different? Um, so at the moment, um, with the training, because I haven't got masses amount of expertise in that area, it's essentially a little bit of winging it and just telling people exactly what works for me. Yeah. Uh, the, the training sessions are seven hundred and fifty for half a day. Yeah. About half the price of others. Um, yeah. But I'm yeah, no. honest with that and literally explain to people the reason it costs so little is it's still new to me. Yeah. yeah. You're, you. you're, you're sharing your experience, right? I mean, that's that's what's kind of key. I mean, our local chat, do you, are you a member of a chamber of commerce? I know we'll get onto that in a bit, but do you, are you a yeah. chamber of commerce? No, I mean, the, we've got a chamber of commerce on the Isle of Wight because you can imagine the island is, is, an, is an island. Right? And... Uh, the chamber are very active here and, and people do, they get businesses to go in and run those courses um, and they then charge every participant 10 quid, um, but they'll run, they'll run a course for a thousand pounds for the provider, you know, it, it works quite well. Um, so there may be something you could, you could do, but it's, uh, and I know not everybody kind of joins these chamber events, so the island is slightly different in, in its business makeup. Uh, so, so location is not a problem. You'll work with anybody anywhere. Uh, yeah, no, that's good. Right. So back to people buying from people. Um, great phrase and all of that kind of stuff. Um, you mainly network online or do you network offline as well? I do a little bit of both. So at the moment, um, because Social Gems is only three months old, I've not yeah. really had time to get out and meet anyone as of yet uh, and do anything. But I've because historically I've always worked in the recruitment space. Yeah. So all the products I've ever sold have been aimed purely at recruiters. Mm -hmm. Right. So I I'm actually going to the um, REC Expo in London next week. Okay. Yeah, I saw that advertised. Yeah, I've uh, literally gone every year, but as um, as a representation of the company that I've been working for. Right. Yeah. It's the first time I'm going on my own. Um, 
I'm very fortunate and very lucky to have some very good friends um, in the recruitment space. So the Sutton Winson recruitment and payroll insurance guys yeah. have very kindly allowed me to stand on their stand and represent social gems there. Okay, oh, brilliant. Cool. Yeah. I mean, we'd like to. anything apart from the flyers and the business cards. Yeah, I'd like to. Uh, I mean, we'd like to get kind of um, ma maximised to an event like that uh, because we built a part of the mapping solution. We've built a, a vertical. I don't. I don't know if you've I've sent you the video or not, but we did um, a vertical solution of using the maximised product in recruitment. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you know, your. Uh, candidates, you've got your customers, and then you've got active roles, and they all light up on the map. Yeah. Um, and then you can drill down by area and see who's closest and all of those kind of things, and, and filter by skills and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. And we got some fairly pos positive feedback from um, a number of recruitment companies, uh, because they obviously go out as well and meet clients, and they wanted the route planning, um, which, is, which is part of it. But we're not in that space, and I, I tend to find when you're actually trying to make something for a space, very hard to break in unless you know somebody who's already in the space. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's why you wanted to be my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. You know, it's uh, you know, I'm using it to the best of my ability. <laughs> so. Well, literally, the expo is Tuesday and Wednesday next week in London at the Olympia. If you fancy coming, oh, cool. It's, it's, it's a train ride away, and we could it's probably do that. Um, so great advice. So you not you're not gonna you're not doing breakfast clubs and, and evening networks. But you went to the wasn't there a LinkedIn party in 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 Leeds or something? LinkedIn meetups. It was literally people who interact with each other on a daily basis. Just thought that it'd be nice to actually meet each other in person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I went to that just before Christmas. Me and my partner went actually. Right. Because um, I saw Chris's post, I think it was Chris that was posting uh, on that, sort of saying he was going. Um, to be fair, loads of people were posting, and then vid Chris and a few others of us did a video afterwards. That was a right. bit tongue in cheek, yeah. probably a little bit too tongue in cheek for LinkedIn because we got it got banned in the space of two hours. Oh Didn't my it? god! <laughs> <laughs> wow, there's a there's, there's a niche market. Um, <laughs> so, so <laughs> else <laughs> wow. only a bit of fun isn't it um so outside of, outside of the work outside of work what does that mean um what do you get up into you well you what's the what's your, what does leisure time mean or do you not have any at the moment i don't have a great deal um but i do like to i always make sure there's one day a week at least that i'm going to see my best friend yeah, yeah. Just a bit of head space. because you tend to find that once you've just had you even only if it's just half an hour mm. yeah. um, you come back and you're feeling far more creative because you feel happier. Yeah, you know, that's right. Away from it. Um, I'm also very fortunate in the fact that obviously, as we mentioned, Crystal Williams is one of the closest friends, um, James Austin and Rebecca Pay as well. Yeah. Um, we're, we're actually planning on meeting up again because every single one of us works kind of remotely. Yeah. So it, it can get a little bit lonely. So we tend to meet up and just have a bit of a chat and a drink and, and something to eat together every now and again. Yeah. Um, and otherwise, if I've got brain fog to the point where I cannot think straight anymore and I just need to walk away from my laptop. Yeah. Um, as mentioned before, I live in the arse end of Narnia. <laughs> um, so behind my house is just literally lakes and fields. All right, okay. So I grab the dogs and pull her off for about two, three hours and then come yeah. back to like a completely new person. Yeah. And I think yeah. that that is one of the really nice things about working for yourself. Um, you know, I don't always come in first thing in, in fact i never come in first thing in the morning because i'm just rubbish at getting up due to injuries and those kind of things occasionally i surprise poppy and i'm, I'm, I'm here <laughs> before me <laughs> <laughs> I'm here before, but it's very rare um uh, but yeah no i like you know, a little bit late as well poppy <laughs> sorry usually on the days where you turn up a little bit <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've, we've got total flexible working here um we just use the office as a resource because of all of the kit that we need to especially with the development guys you know they've, they've got racks of servers so it, it, you can't expect someone to have that in their home so it's more of a base than it is a, a kind of nine to five you know you're late you've not hit your target you're on a kpi all that kind of stuff we don't we don't really operate like that um, to be fair, I think it's just added pressure for added pressure's sake. It is. 
and this. Um, the that I'm going to be putting in place, those guys are, are going to be completely flexible. As long as they're taking calls and dealing with the clients that they're dealing with, if they do their content writing at night, I don't get. So we've lost you, I think. Am I back? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You just you just kind of went into slow motion mode. It was quite entertaining. Really. <laughs> yeah, literally, all I was saying is, if you're with the content writer that we're planning on taking on board, yeah. Um, as long as they're dealing with the um, calls with the clients, if they yeah. want to write their content at nine on a morning or nine at night, really don't care. Yeah. No, 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 no and that's how it should be. I, that's exactly how it should be. You know, I think the world of work is changing as well. Um, yeah. No, I was. I was. You know, I've obviously connected with Chris and I connected with James as well, and I, I comment on Rebecca's stuff quite a lot as well. Uh, I think it's Rebecca. I don't know. Maybe I do. Yes, you have to be fair. I think I've seen you on Rebecca's. Yeah. They are just literally two of those people are social media experts, um, and I do lean on them quite a lot sometimes if there's something yeah. that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's quite nice to have that support network because. There'll be things that I notice that Chris doesn't notice. There'll be stuff that Chris notices that I don't notice. And if we all work together and help each other out, we can ensure we're offering the best to all our clients. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's and right. the thing is, LinkedIn's going to keep evolving and it's going to keep improving. And now it's got kind of Microsoft behind it. Um, it's it's going, you know, the, the technology that goes in behind it will will you know, endeavor to be make a better platform. Um, I've, you know, I've noticed a lot of changes since you know Microsoft made that acquisition, and I bet it's probably the best acquisition they've ever made because um, it's one of their biggest revenue generators today. Well, the amount of people, because I mean, how many people actually don't have a basic package anymore? Yeah. Most people minimum have premium, and that's yeah. fifty plus pound a week a month. Yeah, a month. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've not, I've not progressed the premium yet. I keep kind of looking at it, thinking, you know, yeah, I should. No, I shouldn't. Yeah, I should. You know. Uh, but I've not been I've not been blocked by anything yet, so I I, I do run out occasionally of search queries. Uh, but not you go, are you all depending? Oh, what, sorry. So, so when you when you're adding people and you hit you hit your limit. Yeah. You go into your pending connection requests and yeah. remove. That helps, does it? Yeah. So literally, you've got so many that you can send out. So if you go onto your pending, you'll see that there's people in there that you'll have sent connection requests to two, three months ago. Yeah. Some even years ago. Yeah. Clear that all out and resend connection requests to other people. It kind of gives you them back. Right. Ah. Right. But it does okay. take about 24 hours, 48 hours sometimes for that. Yeah. yeah. I, to be honest, I only do about 20, 20 connections a week. Um, in that way, you know, because I'm looking, you know, obviously looking to work with. We tend to do research, actually. Um, we don't do the kind of message, you know, hi, do you want to connect? I want to sell you something. Um, I used to, but I don't do that anymore. But we do pick out people that might be able to add some value to what we do with maps and, may, you know, may want to, you know, be involved in the whole geospatial, geospatial space. That's a big word. A map space. Uh, anyway, that's not about maps. We're not talking about maps. We're talking about Jam. Um, uh, is there anything else you want to add before we go into the quick fire round? Uh, no. Yeah. You put me on the spot and I go. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, that's that's going to be a very short two minutes then. <laughs> The uh, quick fire round. Do you want to do the quick fire round? Well, how how did you guys come about then? So why did you design the platform that you guys saw? Uh, oh, she's so, turning yeah. it round on us now, see? Uh, no, no, right. <laughs> okay, put me on the spot. That's not <laughs> yeah. part of the plan. It doesn't say that in my document here. Um, no, so we uh, we are a software company. We, we build software and we've built software for uh, CRM systems for the last 11 years. Um, one of those solutions that we built was a mapping solution just for a CRM system. Um, so you had to have the CRM system to do the mapping. Um, what we found about two years ago, that particular product was coming to end of life. And we decided that either we rebuilt it just for the purpose that it was with inside the CRM system, or we kind of went big or went home. And uh, we decided to turn it into a platform. We moved our mapping provider over to Google because we liked all of the street view and all of those kind of things. 
Uh, that's anything else though, isn't it, really? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's done, isn't it, really? <laughs> so um, it gave us route mapping, it gave us route planning, it gave us um, all of the integrations. And if we built a platform, then we didn't just have to rely on one CRM system. We could you know, connect to Salesforce, we'd connect to you know, Sugar and Dynamics and Excel. It just made the actual reach so much better. Um, so that's what, that's what we did. Um, we, uh, we we kind of started development two years ago and we launched it last October. Yeah, so uh, we're in that very early stage of kind of onboarding customers. But we just got we just got listed with Gartner this morning on their uh, on their software site. So that was quite good fun. So what would you say in um, in terms of CRM systems? Because obviously I'm I'm excelled and used to using them all the time. Yeah. People's biggest bugbear when it comes to CRM systems. They don't work. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of them is, is what, what you've kind of done with the integration into other systems that is people's biggest bug there yeah. especially for sales professionals it's kind of a well you've got to put this information into an Excel spreadsheet but don't forget to put it in the CRM system and then yeah. you put it in here as well yeah. and it's just complete duplication yeah. so half of your day is just about inputting data yeah I mean it, it doesn't it. matter it doesn't matter if you're using Salesforce or Dynamics or, or Sugar or any of the, you know, Zoho or, or whatever. There's, there's loads of them. They're all pretty good. But you are, it is a database, and you are filling in forms um, and collecting data. Um, and it would be, you know, so much better if there was a, a way that you could, you know, just, just upload content, you know, a, a, a content CRM, which was just like you recorded a video and, and uploaded that file because, you know, then you can watch it, right? You don't need, or as long as it's got an address and an email address, that's actually all you need. Exactly. Well, I like it. So um, we'll build that <laughs> next, right? Okay. So quick fire round. Um, how are we doing for time? Well, we're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well on the old time. Yeah. Um, what's your favourite film and why? Big Fish. Um, got no idea who's who made it, but it's essentially about a guy who spent his whole life talking big stories and making himself sound much more interesting than he actually was. Mm. Um, and the guy in question actually died uh, in the end of it. And the whole moral of the story is you never actually die. You always live on in your stories. Yeah. Okay. Um, I lost my dad uh, eight years ago um, and my dad was exactly the same with the big right. stories all the time. And it reminds me of my dad and reminds me to think about it in a positive light as opposed yeah. to they've gone. Yeah. I've always got memories and people can never take that away from me. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite sport apart from walking the dog? Um, no, I only run for the ice cream van. <laughs> you, you, it, it, it can include watching sport. You're allowed to, you're allowed to put that down as well. To be fair with me, I think the only thing I do, and I haven't been doing it since setting up social gems, and it's probably why I'm a little bit more chunky than punky than usual, um, is insanity. So I literally really do enjoy spending half an hour on a night absolutely pummeling my body to a point where I'm shaking because you feel so much more relaxed afterwards. Right, right. So you're going to have to explain insanity. Yeah, I've not, I've I, not I, even heard of that. I, I just had this horrible thing. <laughs> it's just like, what about okay. Him? High intensive, high intensive interval training. Ah, oh, yes. So it's literally you, you. Everything's in sets, but you'll be doing like thirty press ups. Yeah. Then what I do is thirty leg twists, but you're not allowed a break in between. And if you do have a break, it's about thirty seconds. Then you move on to the next thing. Yes. So it's a way of losing weight, um, without having to put a major amount of time into it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I'm not a sports person. I only watched the four. I, I only watched the Formula One, and that's it, really. Um, can you re recommend a good book for business? Um, do you know what? It's for. Um, it's probably for as a whole. So I struggle um, to let things go at times, and I care too much about the little things that I shouldn't care about. Yeah. I think most people and most business owners would probably resonate with that and do the same thing. Yeah. And um, the subtle art of not giving a fuck is the best book ever. I need to read that. I am. Um, that is on my read list. 
it, honestly, I've, I've been reading it and the, the bit that's kind of stuck with me the most is it talks about this loop and it's where you think you're not good enough. Then you're like, oh, why am I thinking I'm not good enough? I'm clearly not good enough. Oh my God, I think this about myself, I'm stupid. Yeah. And it's a complete loop yeah. um, that we drive ourselves insane with. And essentially the book just says, you cause it yourself. Yeah. You make yourself feel that way, just cut it off. Yeah. So yeah. when you start that thing, just think, stop it. Quite interesting that actually, because uh, I, was, I was having a conversation with my daughter last night and she's going through that stage of, of kind of being 13, 14, 15, going 21. Um, and she's like, you know, I'm ugly, I'm fat, you know, I don't know anything. I'm not confident. Every possible, I don't know, I don't like, I can't be. Mm. Um, we're going through at the moment. So it's, it's that causality, that, that, that loop that she's just putting herself through. And, and our friends are doing it as well. So they're, they're, they're all, you know, you know, you know creating their, their own worst problems. So. Right, my, my little boy's seven and he'll come home from school and he'll go, I've done this. And I'm like, he's like and it didn't go well. And I'm like, well, what happened? I'm just not going enough. And he's like, well, you're not just not good enough. When did you start learning how to do this? This morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything takes practice. Yeah. Uh, no, one, no one was a professional when they first started out at anything. Yeah. Uh, commitment. Yeah. yeah. No, it's uh, it is yeah, and then patience is the other is the other virtue, isn't it? It's really you know get, getting the kids to actually go. Uh, so my uh, you know my son will get a new game and he'll be like, oh, I can't play this. It's just too difficult. I don't know how to do it. We've only had it five minutes. Mm. <laughs> it's like, give it a moment. Oh, actually, I've sussed it now. You know, I can do it. Yeah. So um, I'm not going to ask. Well, there's a question here that sort of says, if you were going to start again, would you would you do anything differently? But you're only three months in. But is there anything that you would do differently? What have you learned in the last three months? Freaking Tom. <laughs> 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 no, to be fair, I've um, so I've always been business development. The companies I've worked for have been quite small companies. Yeah. So what I've done, it's never just been sales. It's been sales, marketing, helping with people, helping in different aspects of the company. So I always already had a decent knowledge base, mm. and I noticed and knew straight from the word go with the accounts and the back office stuff and the admin aspect of social gems. It's just not my it's not my strength. Um, yeah. So I do think I made the right decision to have a business partner that dealt with that aspect of it for me. So sure. probably, I would have probably liked to plan it a little bit better because right. um, obviously it was just literally a, do you know what, let's do it now yeah, um, yeah. type situation. And it was literally in the kids' holidays. So I was trying to juggle setting up a business whilst watching um, a hyperactive seven-year-old. <laughs> best best time. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I not change anything. I've changed into the week after. Yeah. <laughs> uh, da, 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 what we got? Uh, what what one piece of advice would you give to a business startup? Believe in yourself. I think that's. I think a lot of companies struggle and suffer because they suffer from imposter syndrome, mm. and they struggle to believe that there's actually value in what they're adding to other people. Yeah. But if you're struggling to believe the value yourself, it's very difficult to get others to believe in you too. Yeah. So believe in what you're trying to achieve. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I mean, it's, you know, there's no, there's, there's no magic formula. There's no, there's no sort of like, this is how you run a business. This is how you be successful. Um, yeah. I noticed Chris's post this morning about some of the, the kind of 10 X's on, on LinkedIn. And that, that is a thing you can 10 X a business. It's, it's, it is a strategy. Um, you can buy all of the books, you can go to all the seminars, you can jump up and down and wave your arms and, you know, it's fantastic. But at the end of the day, it's you. you know, and if you don't believe in yourself, then you're, you're going to achieve what you achieve. You know, and if you don't believe you can achieve it, you ain't going to achieve it. I said achieve a lot of times then, didn't I? <laughs> well, if you've got a negative mindset towards something, it's always, it's always going to feel like an uphill struggle. Yeah. yeah. Totally agree. Um, name one thing that you could improve on online networking with LinkedIn. What I could improve or what well, no, LinkedIn what, what LinkedIn, how LinkedIn could improve. Name, name one of your kind of, your, it would be great if LinkedIn did, did this. It, it would be great if LinkedIn gave us a ha 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 option when we like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, um, I thought that. 
and probably just saw out the bloody glitches people. Yeah. yeah. Because there's, there's a lot that's been added recently, so now you can actually invite people again. I know they removed it, but they've added it again. We right. can ask people to like your company page, which is fab. I don't do it for my company, and I prefer to prove to people that you can do it through natural growth. Yeah. Um, the option is there for people that want to do it. Yeah. You can actually like and comment on behalf of the company now, where you couldn't do it before. Yeah. So they are adapting and changing things yeah. to try and make it better. You've got to think last year you couldn't beginning of last year you couldn't even do a video yeah 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 absolutely um the i think the one one the one thing for me um, is is the inbox yeah. it's got to be the worst inbox of you know i can't feel like I, you know i can search it and i can look for stuff that's not read or you know it's like, well, i'd like some folders you know make sure <laughs> i just say these are the people I've contacted. These are the people I haven't. These are my friends. The, just something to just kind of categorize. Okay. The minute, and I guess LinkedIn was never really. It's you know, in the early days, you didn't. People didn't think of followings of tens of thousands of people. But I get you know, messages. You know, I can get 20, 30, 40 messages a day, uh, and it's you know it's a couple of hundred a week, and you're scrolling through them, going. Yeah, some of them are just thanks, thanks, thanks. Oh, right, okay, that one's a bit interesting. And you know, I, I, it would be just nice to be able to kind of filter them out, but that's just a personal point. So if you have sales now, anyone yeah. that you're actually trying to work with, you can save them as a lead. Right. Um, and if that person then messages you, it doesn't come up in your normal inbox on LinkedIn. It yeah. comes up in a completely separate app in the inbox right. there. So right. that's the an easiest way of segregating it right. and say save someone as a lead you've followed it up you've spoken to them they've decided they're not interested they're never going to be interested in what you can offer you can remove those people as leads and then they'll go back into your normal inbox right oh, right right okay i want it for free though Jim. <laughs> sales nav is expensive to be fair but it does it puts everything from those people that you're trying to um approach as a lead yeah. in a comp this separate feed, yeah, so it I mean, just makes it easier to it's, focus on. It's sales nav that integrates with Microsoft Dynamics as well, so it feeds it into the CRM system. So, um, right, can you recommend anyone else that should come on and do one of these? It's got to be Chris on it. It's got to be Chris. <laughs> I, that I, I, that scares me to death for so many reasons. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm not the most PC person in the world, but yeah, getting Chris on, you're kind of going to be sat there thinking, oh my God. It'd be just, it'd be just the Chris show, wouldn't it? I'll just sit back and go, <laughs> off, off you. in fact, we'll get you both in. I'll just sit back and go, hey, guys, Chris and Gemma. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much what anybody else does. I mean, even Mike with it, I think that the one that they did was quite good. Mike yeah. still managed to dominate even with uh, Chris on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's cool. Um, boom, boom, boom. So that's it. We're, we're, we've we've done we've done Q and A. Do you want to add anything else? Again, you've done that whole. I can't think. <laughs> All right, good. Um, is there anything? To get rid of you now. No, no, no. It's not, I mean, um, and Poppy will stop streaming. But if you stay on, then we can we can do wrap up afterwards. Um, okay, finally, because we are coming to time. We've been doing this for about an hour. Um, I don't know if it feels like an hour. Maybe it does. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's your chance to let's let's do contact details. How, how do people uh, get hold of you? Apart from on LinkedIn, um, you've got a website, you've got email, you've got phone. Um, obviously, you don't have to you only say what you want because this does get broadcasted on a podcast as well. Um, All right, I've had stock. Is it past the answer? <laughs> <laughs> um, so emails just literally gem with a J because obviously my mum was awkward. Um, <laughs> socialgems.co.uk. Uh, and contact number is 07498 309 Are you okay we add that to the video at the end as a, as a tag? Yeah, getting okay. nods. Yeah, lost your sound again, but never mind. Okay, so. Then to be fair. Uh, sorry? I think that might have just been me nodding. I wasn't actually saying it. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 <laughs> I've got a very small screen here. I don't know if you, well, you won't be able to see that. You're, you're about this big. <laughs> they are about that big on mine, but I yeah. like the fact that I'm that big because you know, at any point have I seen how big I actually look on this camera? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
No, so it's just like, I, I, I do need to get a, a bigger screen for the studio. Anyway, Gemma, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Um, you're one of our, obviously, first to do a remote session. We want to do more of these and obviously build that business community on the on the kind of business page that we, we do. We, we run it for free. We invite people in. It's all about kind of working together um, and sharing just a little bit of time to hear what everybody does. Um, and that way we can we can share you know, what we do and, and build businesses together. It's that whole rising tide floats boats and things. So thank you very much. And I'll keep commenting on your stuff. And that's it. We're done. We'll see you next time. Yeah, see cool. you later. And if you don't comment, I may cry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Gemma. Thanks again. See you soon. <laughs>